There's a reason why this method is called método de los relojes. All the grammar is explained in the shape of a clock. We're going to start with one o'clock, a la una. These are the rules for one o'clock, and right now it probably looks like a whole bunch of gibberish. V1 is the first verb in the sentence. And then after V1, you add something, whether it's antes de, para, or a G1. And I'll explain what a G1 is in just a second. And then you have V2. V2 is the second verb in the sentence. These are the rules for one o'clock. And right now, it probably looks like a whole bunch of gibberish. But I'll explain how it works. V1 represents the first verb in a sentence. Then, at one o'clock, you can either have para or antes de, followed by V2. V2 is the second verb in the sentence. There's also something special called a G1 that I'll explain later. It's going to be a little bit easier to understand with an example. Here are two examples. Espero que seas mi amigo. Espero is the first verb, which makes it V1. And seas is the second verb, which makes it V2. You can have V1 and V2 right next to each other also, like espero ser tu amigo. It's going to be a little bit easier to understand with an example. Here are two examples. Espero que seas mi amigo. Espero is the first verb, which makes it V1. And seas is the second verb, which makes it V2. You can have V1 and V2 right next to each other also, like espero ser tu amigo. So now that this gibberish makes a little bit more sense, I'm going to throw some more at you. The full rules for one o'clock look like this. So we have a V1, and then we have para, or antes de, and then we have a V2. But the V2 has two options. The V2 can either be in the infinitive or the subjunctive. That's what I or S stands for. It stays in the infinitive if the subject is the same in both parts of the sentence. And it changes to the subjunctive if the subject in the second part of the sentence is different. I have two examples down here to make it a little more clear. Example one, hablamos para que escuchen. We talk so that you guys listen. The subject of the first part of the sentence is nosotros, and the subject of the second part of the sentence is ustedes. Since there's a difference in subject, we add que after para, and we conjugate escuchen in the subjunctive. The second example, bailo para divertirme, the first part of the sentence, the subject is yo. In the second part of the sentence, the subject is still yo. So divertirme stays in the infinitive. Here are two more examples with antes de. Me maquillo antes de salir means I put on makeup before I go out. The first subject of the sentence is yo, and the second subject in the sentence is also yo. So salir stays in the infinitive. As opposed to llegué antes de que él llegara. The first part of the sentence has yo for the subject, but then the second part of the sentence talks about él. I got there before he got there. Since there's a difference in subject, we conjugate the verb, the second verb, in the subjunctive. Notice that the first verb in the sentence, the V1, is conjugated in the past, which means that we also need to conjugate V2 in the past subjunctive. So then we have a G1. A G1 is a very special kind of verb that skips the para or antes de. You just have a, v, a G1 and then it goes right to the V2. The rules for the V2 attached to the G1 are the same as if it was a V1 and a para or an antes de. So the options are infinitive or subjunctive. The G1 and all the other Gs are special kinds of verbs that go along with certain times of the clock. G1 goes along with one o'clock. And it goes back to the types of verbs that we learned in the other video. For example, a G1 encompasses all of the type one verbs. Type one verbs, if you remember, are a mi me. So a mi me gusta, a mi me importa, etc. Type two verbs are either ser or estar. And they're considered G1s when they express a personal opinion. In other words, you have the verb ser conjugated as es or era. And then you have an emotion like triste or sorprendente or something like that. 
Last but not least, we have verbs of types three and four, and they're considered G1s when they're expressing desire, like querer, necesitar, desear, etc. Now here's an example with the type one amime verb. All the amime verbs are G1, so you can have gustar, importar, encantar, the list goes on. Te gusta leer? This is asking if you like to read. Since there's no subject change, it stays in the infinitive. But down here we have no te gusta que yo lea. The first part of the sentence is saying you don't like, but then the second part of the sentence is saying that I read. And since there's a change in subject, we need to conjugate leer in the subjunctive. I also want to point out that in English we say I don't like it when you do something. In Spanish, this is the equivalent. We don't use cuando, we use que. Now here's an example with a type 2 verb, ser o estar. In this case, it's ser. And honestly, for G1s, it's pretty much always going to be ser. So we have es bueno dormir. It's good to sleep. There's not really a subject in any part of the sentence, so dormir stays in the infinitive. But if you have es bueno que ustedes duerman, there is a change in subject. So dormir becomes duerman in the subjunctive. The verb querer is a type 3 or verb, which means that it's a G1 because it expresses desire. In the first sentence we have quiero viajar, I want to travel. The subject in both of those verbs is yo, so the second verb stays in the infinitive. Versus quiero que viajemos is I want us to travel. So the first part of the sentence is yo, but the second part of the sentence is nosotros. So viajemos needs to be conjugated in the subjunctive. 